We have our DD Pi charger. This is a standard one that came with it. I've buzzed out the, t the earth terminals. Um, so the two sort of ground terminals or zero volts, earth, whatever you want to call them, are actually referenced together. So you don't need to choose one side or the other because they're both hooked up, which is great. Be aware if you're ever doing this sort of hardwire conversion yourself, sometimes those 12 volt doodads are only hooked up on one side. So I'm going to jam it here into this sort of clamp so it doesn't spin around too much. I don't have too much to play with. There's not much meat here. And there's a large chance I'm going to melt some plastic if I'm not careful. So I'm just going to try to tin it. Let's see if that's feasible. Heat. It is. It's tinning. It's taking it. Let's see it there? Nice. If I was ready there, I could have just done that all in one hit. But uh, let's just touch that on there now. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, because you've dumped a lot of heat into a probably quite a large amount of metal here, just wait a few moments because it may well just drop off, basically, because it's uh, it's going to take a while to cool down. So getting the one on the end is going to be a bit more tricky. Uh, I'm going to go for twisting this into a kind of a a U shape and seeing if I can kind of hook it on. Let's just see if we can tin the end as well. They're normally plated in the same materials, like nickel or something like that. Tin. Yep, it's just about taking it, but it's really sucking the heat out of the iron, so I'm going to have to be quick with it. Keep it held. That's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. So what I'll do is I'm going to just make sure the ends of the wires are the nice same length because I think that's more professional. Now, heat shrink. Heat shrink, heat shrink, heat shrink. We do have a big old box of it. And this big old box does have some big old sizes. If we really want to waste it on this... Um, hmm. See what we can do. There's a smaller. Oh, that was hot. Still very hot, guys. Um, the smaller size is definitely not going to do because, as you can see, there's no chance of it just getting anywhere up that. And then we've got the very big heat shrink, which is also the very expensive heat shrink. Um, that may or may not do. I don't know if it'll shrink shrink down enough, but we could try a piece. You know, you only live once. Got a bit of yellow here that's already been used, so let's just go with that. I don't really want to use up all my yellow, so I'm going to put it on the end and start shrinking it this direction, and then we'll we'll probably just trim off what we don't need. I mean, let's see. Uh, to be fair, I think half of that would be more than enough. If I can find a suitable way of cutting this, and I think a scissors will do. Turn on our hot air. Seems to be working. So you can see so you can see there's only a certain coefficient of shrinkage going on here because of course you can't shrink down indefinitely. You do buy these in different strengths. So I'm going to use a bit of clear to show you what I would then do. I would take some clear and I'm going to cut that a little bit shorter. And this is obviously a smaller diameter. So we can kind of work our way down really. You want to make sure that you're capturing the outer one that you've just done though because otherwise you won't really have any strain relief going on with that. Depends what you're looking for. You're looking If you're looking for strain relief or you're looking for insulation then we're really looking for both right now. So let's shrink this portion down and see what happens.
So you can see you can keep playing this game all day long with smaller and smaller, but clearly there's a point where you want to stop. And I'll show you what to do when you reach this point. Now on my shelf, I normally have tiny cable ties. I've only got this absolutely massive one, but what you try to do is get one of those smaller, sensible size cable ties and just crank it on over here. You just put it right there on the end and you'll pinch those wires. What I'm gonna do though, I might try to just put it onto this big thicker piece because it's, it's only gonna be able to crush so far. And I think it's gonna do a pretty uh, good job. There you go. See that wire's not gonna go anywhere now. And that's it, ready to go. I'll just show you the final thing, which are the fittings I'd use to put on the end. So get yourself one of these sort of splice connector kits, and I'm just showing you that you don't have to go and spend a fortune at RS or Halfords or anywhere. This is just a standard one that I picked up in a sort of local town shop. You see the uh, sort of cheap brand tools, Rolson and those sorts of things. And this whole box was about four pounds, so it wasn't particularly cheap. You know, I've seen them cheaper, of course. But uh, just have a look at the selection you get. It's a fine selection here. So all you're going to use, you can just use these small size if you want. Um, I like these ones better though. <laughs> these ones are almost translucent, so you can see they're a bit cheaper because you can almost see through them because they're made out of old Tizer bottles. But um, you poke one end in like that and the other end in like that. And you can just crimp these now onto uh, any existing uh, wiring in the car. I should I should suggest, though I really will suggest, buzz out something near the fuses uh, from the fuse box. If you have a wiring diagram, a wiring diagram, great, use a sort of accessory one. If not, use a multimeter to just check it's a circuit that comes on with the accessory. There is actually a fuse inside this, so it is actually fuse protected in here anyway from shorts. And then you can mount that behind the back of your dashboard somewhere. So I hope that's been of some use for you. Please feel free to comment down below, like my video and click subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching.